everyone, this is Margaret Hershey at Home with Hershey's, and thank you so much for joining me today live on Facebook and here on Zoom as well. And we are so blessed and so honored to have Luke Nair, who's the chief chef at the Oyster Box Hotel in Durban, and Loren, his assistant, who are going to be cooking for us today. So you are going to be in for a treat, and we're just sorry we can't eat it. So Luke and Loren, say hi to everybody around the country, and the floor is yours. Luke, tell us the story. Hi, hi to everybody. Uh, I'm Luke, the exe executive chef at Oyster Box. And today we're going to prepare for you the crab curry. And these are the ingredients used to prepare crab curry. We start with the uh, Indian spices all out here, but that's it, the crab curry. And then we're going to follow that up with the chicken and prawn, which is one of my favorite dishes. And it's on around the world. So we start by adding a little bit of oil to the pan. A little bit of butter in it. So it gives it a nice raising technique, more or less. And look, I believe you add the butter and the oil together because then if you add, if you just put the butter, it burns. But if you add the butter and the oil, then it won't burn. Hey, and it yes, also gives it a lovely idea. <laughs> wow, <laughs> those spices look amazing. Goodness me. <laughs> How do you know which spices to get? You get them all from the spice shop. Yeah, but some are, most of them are mixed ourselves. But this year we get it, and then we put two in and mix it together. This is actually a seafood masala, which we yeah. put in ginger, garlic, and thyme. All of that is mixed in here and ground together. So we get a variety of spices and we put it together. So this okay. is one of our officials. So that's the secret of your fabulous curry, hey? Wow. I must say, it looks, it looks very hot to me. <laughs> it's not really hot. It depends on how, how much you want to use in it. It's your onion in there. You need a bit of the meat. And this here is. Um, Jira seeds, which is tumor, some in there. Jira seeds, eh? Wow. Then we need some mustard seeds in. It goes okay. well with bread. Oh, well mustard seeds. Okay. And also put in the stem of the cardamom, a couple. Cardamom, wow. Is you actually fry those seeds in the butter and the oil with the onions, eh? Yes, yes. This is fenugreek, which is known internationally as methi. Okay. Fenugreek. I've always heard about it. I've never seen it before. So there we go. And that's it. That's, that's your fenugreek piece. Uh -huh. So those are all the ingredients you need to give it that amazing taste at the end. Sure. Yes. And this is your jeera as well, which is a powder form. Wow. Is that, is that like a cardamom? Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's more seed. Uh-huh. Your Kashmiri. Wow, that's a lot of curry in there. Yeah, that must be actually spicy. Yeah. Wow. Now this is your seafood masala, which we add in. Uh-huh. Oh, that's a two hefty tablespoons, eh? Yeah, a little bit more chili. That's turmeric powder, just a bit turmeric powder. And then the curry leaves in there. Yeah. Cook off lightly. Mm. When you cook the crab curry here, you mix, you prepare more gravy first. Yeah. Is, uh, now this is more basic way of doing a curry, which is actually a start to any curry. I mean, the difference is in the seasoning. We you put fenugreek for fish. Okay, and then what's that you're putting in now? This is coriander. Coriander, which we call yeah. um, dania. Draw flavors a little bit. Uh -huh. I don't know what the thing is going I'm going to put in more chili, so we'll have a few more oh, wow. chili. <laughs> you know, crab must be actually hot, huh? and it's yes. supposed to be eaten by hand. It doesn't yes. require to talk for a knife. 
Okay. So I said, sir, you put three green chilies and three red chilies in there, hey? That's it, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to fit you the whole chop them up and put them in holes. So you don't no, chop them right. up. I've got, I've got the red chili hole and I've got the green one slit. Slip in half, okay. Garlic in. Nice full of garlic. Wow, that's a lot of garlic. Of garlic. <laughs> yeah. uh, that'll keep the germs away, all right? <laughs> <laughs> that will definitely kill the germs. And normally and you put ginger. In, yeah, you put in half the amount of ginger. It's okay, so. Half the garlic, garlic, garlic. And those of you who haven't got a Nutri Bullet, fantastic to do your ginger garlic and the Nutri Bullet, eh? Give them a nice clear. And then you add some onion, pureed onion to it. This actually helps to thicken the yeah. gravy itself. Pureed onion, I've never done that before. So I'm learning a lot today. Luke, you're teaching me a lot, and I thought I knew it all, too. That would make vegetables different from other foods. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> no, that's really how we can nice never get a proper Durban curry in Durban. <laughs> then we add some tomato paste in. Okay. Two spoons of that. Stop, just the dollop there. And then you just blend the tomatoes. Okay. Put some blended tomatoes in. Okay. Wow. Are you watching? Hmm? It's like one mini one. You actually have a second fingers when you eat this. Yeah, it looks amazing. I bet it smells amazing too with all those spices in. The smell is just unbelievable to all everybody out there. The smell, <laughs> this is just totally, I just, I've just, um, Fountain. Yeah. <laughs> and this, the, the aroma is absolutely amazing. And can you just tell us a bit more about Methi? What does that get? Methi is fenugreek. Oh, fenugreek. Okay. Now, this year is tamarind. It's been dissolved. There's about 50 grams to 80 milliliters of water in here. And you pour it in to make a nice brown beer. Tamarind. Oh, wow. Hey, so you just all the water. Sure. No wonder my curry doesn't taste like yours. Jeepers. <laughs> and there you have a fish gravy, your crab gravy. Now with this, yeah, just this year, you can add prawn to this or you can add any other seafood that you want. So we can yeah. use the curry. So we can use the crab in here. Now when, this is almost done. So cook reasonably quickly. What's that? This is pepper and salt mixed in here. Okay, salt and pepper to taste. That's it. Yep. Okay. Now I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna use my hand. Actually, it's what we do at home. And that's what I do in the kitchen. Hands are clean. It's gonna lower the sink. There's a, so that's the crab in the shell, hey? That's the crab in the shell, which is why you need to eat it with your fingers. Wow. Oh, it takes a whole lot. And you guys get your crabs brought in fresh every day. I don't know, where do you even get the crabs from? Um, our, our, our buyer gets it. He's got about three different suppliers. He's got about uh, three different suppliers, and I think some as far as Richard's Bay and somewhere else. But it's good and how many crabs is that? About three big crabs or, or four small <laughs> ones? These are three medium crabs in there. And then you just literally put it in because the crab cooks very quickly, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So I'm just going to add some water in here, give it a bit more, a bit of a cooking speed out there. And that's your crab curry almost done. Wow, that is amazing. I can't believe how quick you did it. I mean, 10 minutes and it's completely done. That's just astounding. So this year, I'm used to about maybe another 10 minutes cooking in its juices here. And then it's ready to... And it just gets yeah. that flavor into the crab, hey? And that will serve about six people. So it's mm -hmm. three big crabs will serve six people. Yeah. And then now we have a little bit of coriander powder to it. This is towards the end. Uh -huh. Now 
Give me water now. Add a little bit more water into that. So Luke, who taught you to cook this fabulous curry and put all those spices in? Because I mean, you can't read that in a book. Surely you got somebody to teach you that. Did, you, did your mom teach you or how did you learn? I, I did a lot of cooking with my mom in the early days. And uh, I actually started cooking in the kitchen from the age of about nine years old. Oh, really? I think that's what drove me to being a chef. Yeah. I actually planned on being an engineer, but just uh, finished up in the kitchen. <laughs> We're so glad you became the chef. I've had some of your fabulous meals at the Oyster Box. So tell me at the Oyster Box, do you cook for the grill room? I mean, they've got so many restaurants there. They've got the grill room, they've got that downstairs restaurant, you've got the patio. Uh, are you just in charge of everybody who's cooking there? So they say you, you've got about 40 people when you're full tilt in that kitchen, hey? That must be quite something to organize. No, I'm actually in charge of all the cooking in the kitchen, but mainly the Taylor City's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I do a lot there. I do some functions. But of late, I've been a bit on the slow side. <laughs> so, <laughs> you've got Naren who you've taught to take over and he can do everything. Yeah, well, I've trained for, I mean, quite a few people have trained under me in the country over the years. I was walking in London once and I heard somebody say, Chef Luke. And then yeah. I look up there, it was Bruce, the guy that I trained years ago here in Durban. He's now in charge oh, of wow. something, or something. So, so tell us do... about all the famous people. I believe you cooked for the Queen when she came out. You cooked for Princess Diana, Prince Charles. <laughs> Princess Diana and uh, Charles, it was a quick one. They had a visit to Risotto. And then I think they just came in for a quick visit. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just did I keep for them, but I got to meet them. And what and were they like? Started... I bet you couldn't put all those spices in their food because those English people are used to eating very bland food usually. <laughs> <laughs> then you have a little bit of butter. Mm -hmm. and then we know how it's done now, and then the onions. Yes, this is pureed onion in here. This, this actually comes from a Persian origin. I learned this when I was in India for a while back, and I took a Persian dish and turned it in the chicken broth. Wow, the crab curry looks amazing. Sure. It looks so brilliant. Gee whiz. This is going to be your chicken at home. My friend again is busy stirring the thing. But this one I started with a bit of turmeric. Yeah. So it's more yellowish. Okay. And this is a ginger and garlic paste. Okay. It's more fine than the one we used before. So it's got both there. I think so that the snack is to be generous with the stuff, eh? Because you're very generous with your your dollops there. Yes, we don't uh, we don't hold back. We give you the full flavor. <laughs> <laughs> the braising of this here actually requires. Fennel, which is similar to fennel seeds, which is similar to cumin. I'm going to put a bit of cumin in here because I don't have the uh, fennel right now. The cumin also brings out a good taste in chicken. Uh -huh. That's a much lighter curry than the crab. Hey, the crabs are that dark, rich color, but this is more a lighter color. Well, I'm going to make it darker for you this one. Okay. Oh, here we go. This is the real stuff coming in here. What's that? That's a seafood masala. I'm just going to put a little bit more. Is that the one you made yourself? Did you mix that masala yourself? Yes, all mixed on ourselves. And this here is a mixed meat masala. Uh -huh. Oh, that's the meat masala for the chicken, huh? Yeah. You hear that? Oh. So that's the secret, getting those masalas right. That's the secret of that dish, hey? Yes. The, on this one here, it's actually the cumin and fennel that make the difference. So you can start with the chicken, which takes longer to cook. Yeah. What part of the chicken do you use? The breast, the thighs, or just this the whole chicken? Chopped up? 
This is only the breast because it's got no bone in it. Uh -huh. And that's how it was actually introduced. And what's that green stuff? Is that the cardamom? You put it in with it. No, there's no cardamom in this one. What's that green stuff in there? That's uh, coriander. 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 Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You can pick this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Tastes right. Yeah, tastes good. Now cut this lemon more. Cut this and squeeze it in. We're going to squeeze the uh, lemon in there and a little bit more water. Or lime, sorry. And this is our chicken and corn grain. Wow. So you put the chicken in first, obviously, because that cooks fast. It cook, takes longer to cook than the prawns. The prawns won't take long at all, hey? So there's nothing yes. worse than an overcooked prawn. <laughs> yeah. Our prawns are good quality, so it's actually pretty good, no matter whether you put it in the beginning or in the end. It's still That's uh, Naveen's flat for you. Wow, Naveen, that looks just amazing, I must tell you. It really it's does. <laughs> no, the uh, coriander is always be generous with coriander. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more curry here. So, Nareen, tell me, tell me what's your most favorite dish to cook, Nareen? If you could cook anything for dinner for somebody, what would you cook? I like the pasta. <laughs> Oh, you're a pasta king. Okay. Well, you could do yeah. a fabulous seafood pasta there. Wow, that looks amazing. <laughs> it's normally a pasta, but with a bit of chili in it, so the heat always remains. Now, with this crab curry, with this crab curry here, you can do a lot of, you can do a lot to this. You can turn this into a bow and crab curry, yeah. which you will have cream, coconut milk, and coconut shavings to it. You change the color lightly, but then there'll be a bow and, bow and crab curry. Uh -huh. No temperature and a bit more gracefully. But now this is more our local, our local way of cooking. Yeah. That's a Durban crab curry, hey? There's nothing like a Durban curry. No. Looks good and it's almost ready to eat. We get now then to plate it for you now. Let's see what a plated crab curry looks like. I don't know how you can do that. <laughs> I'm sure after his 10 years working under you, he knows exactly how to do that, eh? No, he's a, he's a plating expert as well, he's the boss. Oh, is he? Oh, wow. You must have an artistic flair there, Noreen, to be able to do that. But we need to, if he's plating, we need to see how he's plating it as well, Yeah, eh? yes, sir. You need to come This time we can put it both together. So we're just going to make some space there. Switch this one up like that. And we're going to do the same thing. So that we didn't even need to marinate that chicken here. It's just in the spices and it'll marinate itself. Yeah, no, this chicken here is actually very tender. So there's no need to actually marinate the chicken. But if you want to marinate it, it would be with the... Uh, the jeera powder and fennel and garlic uh -huh. and a little bit of oil. So Luke, tell me, who, where did you learn to cook? Did you learn in the hotel itself or in different hotels? I know you learned with your uh -huh. mom first of all, and then you, you started working. During school, I used to work in restaurants and hotels at weekends. Yeah. There used to be a little hotel down in Kamchotti Beach, it was known as the, the Strand Hotel. I used to spend some time there on weekends and week, weekdays, public holidays. And then there was another restaurant on the beach front, which used to be the Sunkist. I remember the Sunkist Hotel. Oh, right. The Sunkist yeah. Restaurant. Oh, wow. Oh, that, is that, you learned? that was amazing. I remember those days. We were about the same age. <laughs> yes. Oh, I used to go there a lot as well. And there's Portuguese people that used to be there. Actually, the Ferreras in those days, they're actually talking a lot as well. 
So yeah, I've been blessed in that sense, and then at the end of my training days with um, Charles Sainz, and uh, yeah. Herman Bressa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I moved on. <laughs> Wow, and you just got all that knowledge from all of them. You put it all together, and now you're handing it over to the guys that you're teaching. <clears throat> yes, and I think they appreciate it, and I appreciate learning so much from people. Uh, you know, I got to work with a lot of chefs when Paul Bocuse was here in 1987. Yeah. I think he was at the Maharani. You know, in the Maharani heydays, also got some time to spend with him. So a lot of good chefs, but you know, at the end, you build your own stuff. I'm going to put a bit more parlay in there. A little bit more time. Okay, you just you just decide how much you're going to put in. A little handful here and a little handful there. We've got Bonnie Gounder, and she's way up, away from the ocean, but she's thinking of you, and she says she can almost smell the Durban curry coming through. So that's good. good. Thank you, Bonnie. Some, some cumin in there. Cumin in there, okay. Quite generous spoonfuls, yes. I can see. You're going to start plating. We just need that camera to go over a bit there. There we go. Wow, so that's a generous helping of a rice you've got there as well, hey? So that'll feed at least six people, six to eight people. Yeah. Yeah, now your chicken is almost done. You can add the prawns in. Okay. There's no worry about mixing spoons because it's going into the same dish. Shane, our camera's gone off there. Oh, there's we're back again. Fantastic. Yes. Wow, there's prawns. a lot of prawns there. Hey, what's that? About a kilo of prawns. Yeah, a kilo, but I'm not going to put all in. It's normally half an hour. Okay. So I'm only going to feed six people today. They're looking quite hungry. <laughs> yeah, mind them being hungry, we quite hungry our eye out here, so this is amazing. Wow. I'll bring some more money. And now, it's just so nice to see those pots, eh? Hey? Well, wow, that looks super. Now, this year you can get fancy. You can add Worcester sauce to this year, which will change the flavor. You can add soya sauce to this. Which will enhance it even more. You can add your normal ketchup to it. You can also yeah. make it different. You can add calamari to this, whatever you want. But this is a version of our chicken and prawn. It's a prawn in European standard. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of tomato paste in there. Yeah. I know my tiny bit sounds a lot. Eh? I, I, I like your tiny bit, <laughs> it's about half a tin. <laughs> Big heart. <laughs> wow, I must say, Luke, that just looks astounding. It really does. Okay, and there you go. And you, it's almost done, hey, because that does very quickly. That's your done, yeah? This year, you need a bit of honey drip. This is the game changer of this dish. What is See, that? Honey, honey. Honey, oh my yes. goodness, who thought? Wow. Yeah, now that one, I never box. saw that one coming. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. And that just gives it that lovely sweet flavor. Oh my goodness. More fish for the end, yeah. Yeah, yep. Vanessa Frank loving it. Yeah, Nadia, we uh, missed the beginning. Yes, uh, Nadia, we'll send you the recipe for the, cur the crab curry. Will be on my Facebook page later today, as soon as we finished. I can just, I, I, uh, no, she, was there. she wishes she was there because we can just about smell. What's that now you're putting in? This is coconut cream. Coconut cream, wow. Yeah. Coconut cream. Okay, that's also a game changer, hey? Yes, Who knew? Is. 
Let my chef Naveen ready to plate up for you. Okay, let's go over it. Um, Shane will change the camera so we can see. I just want to see that coconut cream going in there. Wow, that's a game changer. That yes. just looks fabulous. And to make it even better, we add some fresh cream into it. Woohoo! Yeah. You can play that. I lost the kilo yesterday. If I had that, I think the kilo would go back on again. <laughs> That must give it the most amazing sauce, hey? And it just enhances those flavors of the chicken and the prawns. Wow. Good French. Taste the vine. Mm, wonderful. <laughs> this here is, it looks divine. Wow. <laughs> I think it's the fancy pots that actually make the food good. Mm. And Bali says she's just missing it. <laughs> an important curry from the Oyster Box Hotel. How I miss working at such an amazing hotel with amazing people like Chef. So, Chef, you've got your followers following you on here today as well. <clears throat> yeah, that's, uh, that's your crab curry done. Look at the color on this one. Wow, okay. It might, it, might, uh, it might require a little bit more salt, but I don't, for me, it's fine. Uh -huh. And there's your chicken and prawn done. Oh my goodness, it is just astounding. Less than half an hour, we've got it all at the ready. Okay, we're gonna take the camera over now to the plate and it's on a red plate, that's unusual. Yeah, we are unusual. <laughs> that's it. So that's a real generous helping there, hey, wow. Now we put a roti in there. So roti. as you yeah, eat with your hand, you can use this as something to wipe your hand with, wipe your hand with as well. <laughs> and Chef, you make your own roti. Yes, we make our own roti. We've got special people down there, which the job is just making roti the whole day. Oh, but really? It's, yeah, it's actually a simple procedure, really. How do you make water. roti? It's actually water flour. Yeah. Oil and boiling water. Oh, that's really? Let's just let done. Can you wait now? Oh, you got done there. Let's just let it done and plate it. Wow, that looks astounding. I'm just so envious I'm not there. Yeah. I'm a serious FOMO. And let's take a picture of it there, Lindsay, next to that wonderful um, pot full of curry there. How nice does that look? Okay, and your chicken and prawn now, you're going to put it on the black plate just to make it look spectacular. I must say that that crab curry looks spectacular on that red plate. I never thought it would, but it does. I'm just quickly coming in here again. Have you got family in New Zealand? Yes, I've got my son in New Zealand. He's watching. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's great, man. You so <laughs> bad. Oh, Sylvester, I'm missing your boy. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That's the beauty of this. You can see it right around the world. So there you go. And so you must be so proud of your dad doing such a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> stuff. <laughs> he's also a chef, Margaret. Oh, really? Hey, that's amazing. Hey, so he saw you, Luke, and he just wanted to do what you did. Yeah, I didn't want him to do that, but he ended up doing it anyway. <laughs> Where does he work? <laughs> is it the Cohen? Is it the group? I think it's the Cine group. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Okay. I wonder if he has those nice. lovely curries over there. That for the South Africans who are in New Zealand, they'll be so excited to have a proper Durban curry. Yeah, I'm sure. That's your chicken and prawn done. Uh -huh. And we're just the expert here to plate it for you. Come, Naren, come work your magic on this black plate here with the chicken and prawn curry. Yeah. <clears throat> we can see it sizzling away there. Oh, huh? those colors just astounding. They're just fabulous. With your rice in this little bowl. Rice in this little bowl. And then you can surround it with this chicken and prawn. Sure. 
Now you see with our owners, they want you to come and eat at our hotel and say you've had a decent grade of food and you're not going home to go and open the fridge and look for more food. <laughs> That's for sure. That's a very generous helping, I must say. That is very generous. Wow. Oh, this year, you can garnish with some coriander on the top. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Is it clean, huh? And there you go. Wow, guys, that was just fabulous. I want to tell you, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I know that uh, the people watching at home are getting amazing, amazing. Both curries look delicious, says Malika. Michaela. Um, so Lana says, wow, just gorgeous. I'm starving. I'm like having matzo and cheese for lunch. And the, all you guys are having that amazing chicken and prawn curry. It looks astounding. Luke, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. And before you go, okay. just tell us about some of the other famous people that you've cooked for and what did you do for them? Do they tell you what they want or how do you work that out? Actually, there are so many requests, so many different diet requirements. Yeah. <laughs> Most of them actually stay in my mind. But there was Al Gore, there was Tony Blair. There was, wow. I think there about 120 head of states. My mm. goodness. Wow, so well done from the guy from Durban. Amazing. Naren, come in and say goodbye to everybody. Thank you so much for helping Luke today. It has been amazing. Uh, uh, these are my people, my, authors, my followers will take over from me soon. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wow, we didn't even see you there. Thank you so much, Appreciate guys. That was absolutely fabulous. We loved every minute. We're just so sorry we can't be eating it, but you enjoyed, you <laughs> have my share. And uh, thank you so much for being on the show today. We love the food. We love those spices. And we'll put the recipes below for the people watching. Thank you so much and have a brilliant, brilliant day. Thank you. You're welcome. Stay well. Thank you.